people are also thinking about inflation right now. And that's something that a lot of people say, oh, well, we, we did MMT and the government has spent too much money with the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan. Uh, and I, a lot of people don't connect the necessity of economic stimulus in times of downturn and just get the sticker shock of how much money we're putting into the economy and say, well, that must be where the inflation's from. Too many dollars are chasing too few goods. We've put too many dollars into the economy and therefore devalued the dollar. People have made a lot of extrapolations. Can you say a little bit about what actually caused recent inflation? We could do a whole, we could do a whole nother hour. Um, <laughs> you know, Jessica, for people who um, maybe didn't pay as close attention to all of this, which is most people mm -hmm. um, during this period. You know, when when the pandemic initially started, we had falling prices in all kinds of areas of the economy. You know, some outright deflation where prices are just falling, you know, uh, rapidly. Um, and then when prices started to increase in the early phase, we saw it in kind of unusual places. Used cars was one of the early places where we saw this uptick in headline inflation. So we said, where is that coming from? And you look into the you know, numbers and you see that there's something you know, happening with used car prices. And we said, what's going on there? Well, we could understand that because you know, we sort of worked backwards and said, well, uh, we didn't know if we were going to have a vaccine or how quickly we might have a vaccine. And a bunch of car rental companies sold off their fleets because they didn't think people were ever going to travel and want to rent cars again. And so those cars got sold off. And then all of a sudden we had trouble producing semiconductors that are needed to manufacture new cars. And then when the economy started to recover more quickly than a lot of people anticipated, people wanted to buy cars and travel again and so forth. Well, you couldn't get a new car off the assembly line because you didn't have the chips you needed. So people turned to used cars and the car companies were rental companies were trying to buy back some of the cars to restock and everybody was competing for used cars and prices went high. And then over time, we just started to see, you know, the inflation being driven by something different this month and something different this month. And, you know, we shifted our, our spending patterns away from services to goods. And we remember, you know, the TV images of all the ships trying to get into the ports and unload cargo and so goods prices went up. We had, you know, freight and trucking and you couldn't get containers. And so people heard a lot about supply chains and bottlenecks and and Chairman Powell, Jerome Powell used to come out, you know, every time the Fed would meet and he'd say, you know, well, we see inflation. And the reason we are not deciding to raise interest rates today is because we think most of the inflation is coming from supply shocks and bottlenecks and COVID related you know, disruptions. And our tool, the interest rate, is really designed to work on the demand side of the economy. So for that reason, we decided not to raise interest rates today. And he would explain that. So for a period of time, and then you know, as uh, the months passed and the um, analysis sort of shifted away from, well, it's all supply side or almost all supply side, people started to say, well, it's coming now broadening into other parts of the economy. And the Fed, of course, started raising interest rates. And then you had economists like Isabella Weber, who came out and dared to suggest that you know, companies might just be taking advantage of the inflationary moment where, you know, consumers are primed to expect to pay more for everything. And so companies will be able to not just pass on their own rising costs to consumers, but to tack on a little bit extra and fatten their profit margins. And so, you know, people have looked the Federal Reserve, San Francisco, New York, Fed, Moody's, the European Central Bank, all kinds of people are trying to do these sort of autopsies now, where you look at the inflation that we have lingering with us today and say, how much of it can we trace to Russia, Ukraine? How much of it can we trace to any excess fiscal you know, money that people still have because of uh, stimulus checks or whatever? How much of it is 
still related to COVID pandemic, supply chain sort of things. And the, the answer, I'm giving you a long answer because it's not an easy question to answer. And depending on who you ask, you'll get a very different answer. Some of the you know, analysis says very little, if any of it. Uh, that we have sticking around with us today is due to uh, excess demand or the fiscal stimulus stuff, that it's almost all other things. Other people will find, you know, different um, different ways to attach weights to those different things. So it's a little bit of probably everything. And that's what I also think is so critical because many economists and other pundits will dismiss MMT's perspective by saying, well, at the end of the day, it's still about inflation, so that you should listen to us. And they're not, you know, Stephanie Kelton and other people, they're not saying anything new. But what's really important is that there's a fundamentally different understanding, and I think you've just laid it out, about what we mean by inflation. It's not just too much money, too little. It's about resources. It's about politics. It's about, you know, sometimes people taking advantage of of costs and prices and getting extra. It's about, you know, what are we producing and do we have the infrastructure for it? So many things, a crisis, a pandemic, right? And I, I, I feel like your work in MMT opens up that conversation in a way we are not used to when we talk about inflation. Well, thank you. 